items. In the problem, it tells us that the company has an accounts receivable balance of $3,460,000, that the allowance for doubtful accounts has a debit balance of $12,500, and total net sales for the year of $46,300,000. We want us to use the aging method to determine the amount of our uncollectible accounts estimate. They tell us that when the company used this aging method, they came up with an estimate of $245,000. In part A, they want us to determine the amount of our adjusting entry for uncollectible accounts. In part B, they want us to determine the amount of our adjusted balances in accounts receivable, allowance for doubtful accounts, and bad debt expense. And finally, they want us to calculate the net realizable value of our accounts receivable. You will notice that this is the same information that was given to us in practice exercise 9.3b. However, we're using a different method to calculate our estimate. They tell us that our accounts receivable is $3,460,000. They tell us that our allowance for doubtful accounts has a debit balance of $12,500. This tells us that our estimate from the prior period was actually too low. We ended up writing off more in accounts receivable than we had estimated. They tell us for part A, that they have done the aging of receivables and they've come up with an estimate of $245,000. This is our target, meaning we want our allowance for doubtful accounts to have an ending credit balance of $245,000. That's where we need to get our allowance for doubtful accounts to be. We want this to be the ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts after we post our adjusting entry. However, we already have a beginning balance in allowance for doubtful accounts. Remember, the allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset account, which means it conflicts or brings down the value of a specific asset. In this case, it's always bringing down accounts receivable. Since it's a contra asset account, we find it on our balance sheet, making it a permanent account. So we need to determine what our total estimate is going to be for the year to get our allowance for doubtful accounts to be $245,000. We know that debits and credits, when they're opposite, they subtract. So my adjusted entry cannot be for just $245,000. We have to add to it the $12,500 debit balance that's already sitting in the allowance for doubtful accounts. If this had been a credit balance, we would subtract it away. So we will take the $245,000 target balance that we want to have. We will add to it the existing $12,000 $500 debit balance that's already sitting in the allowance for doubtful accounts to arrive at how much our adjusting entry will be for for this period. So in this case, our adjusting entry will be for $257,500. No matter which method we use, my adjusting entry is always a debit. Bad debt expense, and in this case it will be for 
and 57,500. And credit to allowance for doubtful accounts for the same 257,500. We know that we journalize first and post to our ledger. So we would post that $257,500 to our allowance for doubtful accounts. And again, opposite subtract. 257,500 minus the bit balance of 12,500 gets us to our target estimate of $245,000 as the ending balance in allowance for doubtful accounts. In part B, they want us to put together our ending balances in the accounts receivable, allowance for doubtful accounts, and bad debt expense. You will notice in our adjusting entry that we just completed, accounts receivable is not affected at all. We debit bad debt expense and we credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Therefore, our balance in accounts receivable has remained unchanged at the $3,460,000. Our adjusting entry that we just completed did change the balance in allowance for doubtful accounts. We added $257,500 to the allowance for doubtful accounts, giving us that desired ending balance of $245,000. And finally, with our bad debt expense, we know all of our expenses would have been closed at the end of the period. Therefore, the only balance that would be an allowance for doubtful accounts would be the adjusting entry amount of 257500 For Part C, they ask for our net realizable value. Again, net realizable value, or NRV, is calculated by taking our accounts receivable balance and subtracting away our ending balance in allowance for doubtful accounts. Determine how much cash we think we can realize from our accounts receivable. So again, our accounts receivable ending balance was $3,460,000. Our ending balance in allowance for doubtful accounts was $245,000. Therefore, our net realizable value for this period under the aging or analysis of receivable method would be $3,215,000.